But the biggest lie that I am having to swallow and that, you know, I find myself saddened by in seeing, you know, uh, my peers swallow is that there are only two options out there. And the saddest thing to hear on the radio and on TV is the propagation of the idea that there are only two options. It really does sort of further that, that binary, that bipartisanship. And we don't actually live in a country where bipartisanship is the only thing that we have to look forward to. It's just the only thing that we're buying into. So we have, is we have structured for ourselves this illusion of choice rather than actually creating choice in, in, in our own features. What they want from people that are hosting radio shows, from people that are hosting TV shows, is to propagate the image that we are, you know, making the selection between two of two evils, that we're trying to select the lesser of two evils. That's simply not the case. But the more so that we buy into and propagate that idea, the more these two evils benefit from that publicity. So, Will, there are some who would call this what you're saying right now kind of uh, ideological. Uh, would you would you agree that the chances of a third party candidate actually succeeding in this election, actually winning, are slim to none? Yes and no. Um, I, I would say that realistically speaking, um, with the way things are now, yeah, it's pretty slim. But the, the only reason that is the case is because we have people saying exactly what I just said. Um, and, and it does, it's, it's, it's a self-fulfilling ranks. prophecy. It, it is 100% a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you have to question how much of, of, of a politician's popularity, how much of a politician's success is actually the result of a publicized image rather than what the public actually wants. And they are two very different things. It's kind of like the, the difference between what is you know, good music that people enjoy listening to and what is popular music. Producers make popular music because they know it sells. Not because it's good, but people sit there and acknowledge, oh, well, this is crappy music, but I'm going to listen to it because it's popular music in itself. It's, it's once again this idea of the self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, we are buying into a lie that we have already created. And media is, in and of itself, at its very core, a business. So it's not going to make money talking about unpopular ideas. It needs to be able to sensationalize something in order to have the material. If you walk into a radio show and you're talking about a candidate that nobody knows about, well, you're, you're, you don't have material. You're not going to have people calling in, either ostracizing you for having that opinion or, you know, trying to build you up or bolster your idea because they favor it. They're just going to be like, well, who is this person that you're talking about? But the fact of the matter is that there are other options at the table. They do exist. Um, they are popular amongst a, a wide demographic. It's just we are so lost in this idea that, uh, you know, that freedom really is an illusion, you know, that choice really is an illusion, that we're taking our own decisions away. In my view, we've already succeeded beyond our wildest dreams mm. uh, for what happened in the Sanders campaign and what it revealed about the Democratic Party. I think uh, it's only fear that constrains principled people now uh, to, vote, to vote Democrat. I think the Democrats have really uh, cast their own seeds of destruction right now.